My name is Henrietta Heald. I am writing a book called Magnificent Women about the history of women engineers in this country. And I hope that you can help get the book published. With me today are Benita Mera and Dawn Bonfield of the Women's Engineering Society on the roof of the IET building. We couldn't be in a more appropriate place to be talking about women in engineering. From here, we can look down on Waterloo Bridge, also known as the Ladies' Bridge, because it was constructed almost entirely by women during the Second World War. And you may have seen giant images of these women projected onto the buildings opposite in commemoration of their great engineering achievement. And just across the river is the iconic London Eye, which was also designed by a woman, Jane Wernick, at the time a director of Ove Arup Associates. We are standing on the Johnson Terrace, which was named after Amy Johnson, the aviator, who was the first woman to fly solo from Britain to Australia and that was in 1930. Amy was not only a pilot, however, she was also a trained engineer. And so when her plane broke down or crashed on her epic journey, as it did often, she was able to repair it herself. Amy Johnson was one of the real celebrities of her age. She was the first woman to get the Air Ministry's ground engineer's license, breaking the barriers of what women were seen to be able to do or what they could or should do. Luckily, we've had these women of the past who've been the pioneers, haven't cared what the people around them thought about them. They knew what they wanted to do, and they were going to follow that dream wherever it took them. So Amy Johnson was one of the early presidents of the Women's Engineering Society, which set up in 1919 at the end of the First World War, when a million and a half women had worked in engineering and technical roles during the war. At the end of the First World War, women were expected to dutifully return to the home, but a group of feisty female engineers set out to fight for women's employment rights. In their wake came a host of inspiring characters, including the prolific inventor Verena Holmes, Dorothy Pullinger, who designed the first car made specifically for women, and Tilly Schilling, aeronautical engineer and motorcycle racer. At the heart of Magnificent Women is the intertwined story of three remarkable individuals and their sometimes tempestuous relationships. Their prime mover was Rachel Parsons, the first president of the Women's Engineering Society, which she co-founded with her mother Catherine, Lady Parsons, in 1919, when skilled female workers were told to go back to the home after the war. The third member of the trio was Caroline Hazlitt, a self-taught electrical engineer who campaigned for women's employment rights and became the most powerful professional woman of her age. These three, along with an array of colourful supporters and campaigners, such as Viscountess Rhonda, Britain's leading feminist between the two world wars, have, like so many other female pioneers, disappeared from the historical record. Magnificent women will bring them back to life. So if you want to know more about the amazing and vitally important female trailblazers who until now have been largely forgotten and help us to introduce them to a wider audience and at the same time inspire a whole new generation of women engineers, please make a pledge to Magnificent Women.